YouTube. So this weekend's project, we are going to be replacing the main fuel tank in this 2000 H1. I don't really need to replace it. There's nothing wrong with the old one. It's just 23 years old, old and crusty. Who knows what the inside of that thing looks like. But I thought it'd be a fun project to get the old one out and uh, just fit it with a new one. And a couple things I want to change along the way, but uh, we'll get into that. But so to put this tank in, I've got a bunch of parts here. I've got the new uh, gasket for the top plate and um, a good idea to replace these if you're going to take it all apart. I've got a new inlet screen, uh, fuel filter. I've got a new rubber hose connecting it to the fill tube. Uh, new sending unit. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the ISPRO ones. Um, if you can see that, these are the only ones you should be putting in your, uh, in your tank. Don't buy those Chinese aftermarket. They're junk. So the O-rings uh, go underneath. They go actually go inside the tank. We'll show you that when we get it apart. A uh, new rubber gasket. I don't think I'm going to need this, but uh, I got one anyway, but I'm going to do something different. I've got a two-inch body lift on this, so there should be a two-inch spacer that's above this tank. And these are the liners for the straps. They used to sell specific length, length ones for depending on where you're putting them, but now they just sell the long ones and you just, you just cut to fit. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, this is my drive shaft protector. Uh, right now I don't have it in, so hopefully I'll get this back in. Got some hardware for that. And uh, when I take my drive shaft out, which unfortunately you have to take the drive shaft out to get this tank out because the drive shaft fits right inside this recess right here. So you have to get that out and uh, get it out of the way before you can drop this tank. And um, a couple things I changed on here. I, I, I put new fittings in here. I don't really like the fact that uh, these thread right into the plastic, um, you know, it's, I guess it works. It's worked on a thousands of them. So, um, I didn't do the angled fitting here. I just heated up and bent this new tube right here. And I got a new fitting here and this one goes up to the fill tube, which is on the side of the truck. I believe this is for my rollover valve. Uh, hopefully I got one in there. Find out when the tank comes down. Now, if you watch some of my previous videos, I talked a little bit about this, uh, this hydraulic cart that I bought from Harbor Freight. Let me get this off of here. So I modified it again. I made this little shelf right here. It's just going to roll under the truck and uh, it's going to help support that fuel tank while I'm lowering it down to get all the connections off the top. Right here, here you have to disconnect your fuel lines and uh, your, uh, your, your plug for your, um, your level sensor. But um, this will help hold the tank up and I can roll this right under. It'll support it while I take the two straps off. It's not going to allow me to go low enough to get it out from under the truck. But once I get it disconnected and down to the bottom, I should be able to uh, just pull it off there and set it on the floor and drag it out. And um, the tank is empty. I think, uh, I think I probably only got a couple gallons of gas left in it. So it's, it shouldn't be that heavy. But uh, so anyway, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is... Uh, we need to get the drive shaft out. So uh, easiest way to do that, probably good idea to uh, chalk the wheel, put a rubber chalk under there, keep it from rolling. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the truck in neutral and then we're gonna jack up one wheel and that way it'll allow you to spin your uh, drive shaft to get to the bolts that are on the difficult side. So let me get reset up here and then we'll get into the truck and see what it looks like. Okay, here we are into the truck, and uh, first thing we gotta do is get this drive shaft out. So now if you, uh, if you jack up one wheel of the truck and just put the truck in neutral, now you can, you can use your foot and you can kick the tire and you can rotate the, uh, the yokes so you can get all those uh, bolts out of there. So take the, take the bottom two out, rotate around, and get the other two out. And then uh, it just slides out of the uh, transmission here. Now, I bought some plugs to go inside here uh, sometimes when you pull this tail shaft out, you'll leak a bunch of fluid. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. But um, I've got the uh, kit from Amazon. It's, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It's just a little kit from Lyle. Uh, they're 10 bucks on Amazon. I believe it's gonna be th uh, this one right here that goes in. And uh, it's, just, it's just a plug, it's tapered. And it's got a block in the middle. And you just shove this in there. It keeps all your oil from running out. It's good to have. Uh, it keeps the dirt out too while you're working on it. So 
I'm going to go down and I'm going to get the drive shaft out and uh, put that plug in and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, that came out of there super easy and literally takes like five minutes to get your drive shaft out. So when I pulled this out of the transfer case, I did not lose any fluid. So that was a good thing. The plugs that I bought, the Lyle kit, there wasn't really one in there that was this size, the size for uh, this shaft. I think this is like an inch 860. So it might be a unique size for GM or something, but it was not in that kit. But uh, anyway, uh, another thing I like to do is as soon as I get this thing out of the differential yoke, I like to put this little clamp on here. If you lose these bearing cups, they fall off. You, you know what they look like? The little needle roller bearings will fall out. You know, you get a chance you're gonna get dirt up in there. So I like to put a clamp on it just to hold these in place. And uh, while I'm working, and that way there's no chance you're gonna rotate the drive shaft, it's gonna fall off and hit the ground. Cause then you're, you might as well just replace the U-joint at that point. So if you don't have one of these clamps laying around, you can take like a piece of grid wire, just something stiff like this. And there's little recesses inside the cup right here where they can hook on and you can over bend this thing a little bit. And you can just put something like that on it, uh, fast and dirty. It will keep those cups from coming off. And um, that might save you a whole bunch of headaches down the road. So now that we got the drive shaft out, I put the wheel back on the ground, took the jack out, put the truck back in park. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get under here and we're going to get this uh, fuel fill tube out of here. So there's three screws inside here. This is the uh, line that goes down to the other side of that T on the tank. So that's going to come out. And then that rubber coupling is right there. We're going to replace that because it's 23 years old. And um, so we're going to get this out real quick. Three screws, this. There's a ground wire up in here uh, connected to the body right here. Static, I guess. But we're going to get that out of here, and then uh, we should be ready to uh, start lowering that tank. Another five minutes. So this thing comes out really easy. Like I said, there's just a little ground strap, uh, the fitting for that uh, vent tube right there, and uh, just one clamp down at the end. I would have loved to replace this, but these have been obsolete for a long time. This one's in good shape. Uh, maybe I just take it down and get it uh, stripped and repowder coated. And um, there's the little... Uh, the little shim that goes inside the gas fill door. You don't have to take any of this out. You can work it and you can wiggle it out of there so you don't have to mess with any of this. But uh, now it's time to get under there and uh, put that support under there and take those clamps down and start lowering that tank. We'll come back when we get that set up. All right, so here we've got the, uh, the support underneath the tank here. So it's kind of out of the way of the frame. It doesn't hit back here. It's going to clear. It's really going to help support this thing and hold it up. Uh, once you get these uh, these two straps off right here, this is the only thing that's holding your tank up. So you've got a bolt right here and a clamp, and then this whole lower section right here just uh, just swings out of the way. And the same thing in the back here. Uh, you take this bolt out, and this thing here just hinges out of the way. Now this truck's got a two-inch body lift on it, so there are some uh, there, there's some extensions up here. They're just you know they're made to drop this bracket down a couple inches, and there's some up in the front. And I had a problem with this thing. Uh, it ran fine until I had a full tank of gas. And when I had a full tank of gas and I made a right turn, this whole tank would swing and it swung into my drive shaft. And that's why this uh, that one plate you saw earlier is, has not been reinstalled yet. So I took it out and it was uh, made the weirdest noise when you're going around a corner and you could actually tear that thing off of there. So uh, it's a kind of a crappy design from AM General. They should have mounted these tanks on the frame and not hung them like a swing from the bottom of the frame or from the bottom of the body. But it is what it is. Uh, so what I, I ended up making up something a little bit different. I made this clamp right here. And this little strap goes around the post that comes down the back side of the frame here. And then I bolted this aluminum piece to the inner side of the frame with two bolts. And by tightening this bolt, it actually draws and it pulls, it pulls that uh, saddle up tight up against the frame, so there's no chance this thing's going to swing out of the way. But um, that thing, I don't know if I can get rid of it or not after I redo this, but um, it's a nice little piece of insurance. You're, you're not really putting a lot of pressure on this; you're just keeping it from swinging around. But um, that worked out really well, and it's just a piece of uh, just a piece of stainless strap that's looped around. The little rod right here to uh, just pull it up tight against the frame so that's worked really well but um when i get this thing down and take a look at it there should be some two inch uh, spacers on the top of this thing that's sandwiched between the top of the tank and the underside of the body 
and I'm gonna see I haven't seen what those look like yet so uh, we'll get uh we'll get going here this is all supported so now I can just go ahead and take these two hangers out and then the tank will have to come down a little ways and then you'll have to get up on top there and disconnect all the lines and the sending unit uh, wires and stuff like that so let me get a little further here and um, we'll see what that looks like when we get that far all right, so I got both those straps loose, and you can see how they just they just hang here. Get this camera out of the way. They just hang right there, and the back one does the same thing. It kind of just hits the frame a little bit. And when they did the uh, when they did the two inch body lift on it, they took the uh, they took the factory bracket, and they basically just made this little extension piece right here. So it's a two inch extension. It just slips over the factory bracket, and then that then goes back up, and it just like T locks up into the underside of the body there's a little there's a little slot uh way up in there kind of like right right there you can kind of see it it um yeah get some light on but anyway there's a slot up in there and that's where that thing hooks in so right now uh this lift right here is kind of nice it's actually holding up the whole tank so i'm going to drop this down a little bit and then try to get up in here i've got to take this other line off right here uh for the um for the vent so Actually, that will come off with the tank, so and the other side's loose, so I probably won't have to do anything with that just yet. But I'm going to start lowering this thing down and seeing about getting up to the top of this tank, disconnecting what's up there, and then I should be able to down and out. So, so far, I've, I've got probably less than 30 minutes into this job, and uh, the tank's already ready to drop down. So, this is not a difficult job, and uh, the, like I said, this thing here is making it a whole lot easier. So, uh, we'll come back in a little bit. All right, so I got the tank down low enough and using my trusty mirror here. You can see there's a couple of fuel line connections there. There's your uh, rollover vent valve. That's uh, right there. That's just a hose clamp. Uh, there's a couple of P-clamps. There's one back there underneath that bolt. Uh, there's one back there by the yellow tape. So, I mean, I can see in plain as day, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to get up here and like do this by Braille. Uh, if I could... You know, I thought about maybe taking my uh, my turbine muffler off right here, and then I could probably just get my whole head up there and actually see what I'm doing. But I'm going to try it this way. Um, there's a couple little clips on those fuel lines. Uh, they need to just pop up out of there. Once you get take a small screwdriver and lift those out, those lines will come right off. You know, another alternative is you could try to take all the nuts out of this plate and, um, you know, just leave the whole assembly up in there to get it out. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and take my time and just disconnect those. That's probably going to take a, a little while anyway. And then there's a plug up in there somewhere for the uh, the sending unit. But So I'll come back when I get this stuff disconnected. And once those few things are, are loose, this tank should just uh, drop right out. So I'll be back shortly. So here it is. It is out. So we've got the new one here. There's the old one. And uh, this stuff actually came out pretty easy up here. These fuel lines... Unfortunately, I broke the I broke one of the clips, but I think I have more of these laying around But these are the little clips you have to get out of the fitting that will uh, they kind of go in there like that And they lock they lock that fitting on so once you pull those out the, the Couplings just come right out and this here just unplugs from the harness um, You can actually almost lower this all the way to the ground the tank uh, to, so you can reach up and undo these I had a you know the, the fuel lines came through here I mean, honestly, this stuff is so captivated up inside the truck. I don't know if I'm going to put this back in. I don't really think being up above the tank, it's it's going to go anywhere. So, uh, so I still need to get this out. And then here's the uh, rollover valve that will get transferred into the uh, the new spot right there. And this shield right here, uh, you know, for this kind of fought me getting past the transfer case. So uh, the back end has to drop down first. And this, I have a transmission cooler under there, so this fitting was kind of snagging on the trans mission cooler housing i probably could have taken that out and it would have been a little easier but you have to line up the yoke on your differential to get this down past uh once you wiggle this down the front slides out i think i'm going to ditch this plate i'm also going to ditch the uh i don't know what i did with it but uh the plate for the um it's out here uh the rock chip guard for the bottom of the tank yeah that thing there uh I'm not putting that back in. I know they probably help, you know, keeping the chips off your, off the bottom of your tank, but it doesn't fit right. And it, it makes it hard to get the tank lined up and put into position. It doesn't roll up over the, the curves on the tank properly. And uh, I think I'm just gonna lose that, get rid of it. 
So now I just got to get this plate out, just a few screws, and then uh, you know, get it all, uh, get this thing ready to go back in, and it should be a, a pretty easy deal. So I had a little gas left in the bottom of this, and I thought, okay, I'll put a pan under it. I'll just pull that plug out. Tell you what, if that plug has been in the bottom of your gas tank for X amount of years, it is not going to come out. This is what that plug looks like. When you tighten that screw up, it just expands that inside the tank. And once that's been expanded for a bunch of years, it is not going to shrink back up to come out. And I fought that plug probably, I don't know, 30 minutes ended up destroying it having to punch it up up inside the tank to get the fuel to come out it wasn't there was no way it was going to come out and i ended up now eh, we'll get it out of there when i get the plate off see what it looks like again but you know this peeled off of the washer that's under there but yeah you know have one of these available if you're going to do it a, a tank rope you know fit don't try to use the old one because it's not going to come out so anyway i'm going to get this plate off of here we'll pull that out we'll see what the inside of the tank looks like uh, this one here, you know, brand new. So uh, that's not dirt down in there. It's just part of the molding. But uh, anyway, uh, back in a few minutes and um, you know, we'll keep going. Uh, really easy. Uh, this is a nice, uh, this is a nice, probably looks like a stainless plate right here. Um, it is thick. Uh, it's pretty resistant to warping, I would imagine. Uh, this setting unit has not been in there that long. I'm going to test it for resistance just to make sure compared to my brand new one. But this is my uh, my fuel inlet screen here. Uh, it's looking pretty discolored, pretty old. I mean, if that thing gets you know compromised, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have suction pro suction problems on your for your fuel, fuel lift pump. Sorry about that. Uh, this plate right here goes up from the inside, and those uh, those O rings I showed you earlier go on the stud first, and they go up underneath. They don't go on top. So make sure you replace these things and. Uh, Put new ones on the studs, and then you just drop that inside and, fit, and uh, punch it up through the holes. Uh, it's a little tricky. you got to pry it out a little bit. It hangs up a little bit. There's the old gasket. Uh, not that bad of shape, but the inside of this tank after 23 years, not that bad. I mean, I just don't like the way the, the outside of it looks. It's just old and crusty, and uh, and look at this. This is my, uh, my fuel baffle right here. Broke loose, been bouncing around. Who knows how long in the bottom of that tank that's supposed to be welded to the bottom but not anymore so anyway i'm um, gonna start working on gonna test this and then uh replace that and get it all the new stuff put uh into the new opening over here and get everything changed over and then uh we'll probably be ready to pop this one back up in and it's not going to be slimy and slippery and i imagine it's going to be uh going a whole lot better now since this had a uh, two inch body lift on it I don't like the way they did this. I mean, this is this is hokey as hell right here. This is this is shit. So when you drop it two inches, you have to put these two inch spacers right here where it gets sandwiched up to the underside of the body. And um, I've got some I've got some really nice, real thick uh, 3M adhesive back rubber. So I'm gonna I think they just use that to hold the old uh, uh, rubber piece onto the spacer. But I'm going to clean that up a little bit, um, maybe even bond it, you know, double, I got some uh, nice 3M uh, VHB. I could bond these things right to the tank before they go in. And what I find interesting about this is you can see there's an indentation on the tank here. The frame rail rides right along the side of this thing. And it gives this place, it gives that hanger a place to go. And back here, they didn't do that. They made it flush. I don't know why they didn't do a small indentation right here to allow that strap to go down, actually goes down to right there, and uh, you know, give a place for that thing to go because that strap, whereas uh, you know, when it comes down, it rides like like right there. And now you've got this is keeping your tank from going tight up against your frame rail. So it would have been nice to have a little indentation right there. And uh, there's, there's another one of those extension pieces. If you get a two inch body lift kit. It's probably going to come with something like this. You can extend your hangers a couple of inches. But uh, other than that, it should go back together pretty well. Uh, getting this one out, I have a transmission cooler mounted up under the truck. This got hung up underneath. It probably would have been easier if I had taken that out. But it's easy to get to. So now I'm going to fit everything into the new tank. Get this out of my garage because it stinks something awful. And uh, 
We'll come back when uh, we get back under the truck and get ready to reinstall this thing. Here's another quick one for you. If you're going to replace this uh, inlet screen, these things are on here super tight. I mean, you pretty much have to destroy it to get it off. I mean, you can see it's all, it's all shredded now. So when you put the new one on, there's really no way to, you know, you can't grab a hold of that little collar that's down there. Um, and it's a really tight press fit. So what I found out is you can push down on this. And if you push down with the palm of your hand and get this thing supported so it's, it's sitting flat on something, just use the palm of your hand and you can collapse it down to that little metal collar in there and you can just give it a push and it'll actually, it'll seat real nice. Uh, you can feel it go down in there and it is a, it's a tight fit. I mean, there's no way that's going to fall off inside your tank. So I thought I'd pass that on, a uh, helpful tip. And uh, this thing cleaned up. It, uh, the, I checked the uh, ohm value on this. It ohmed out uh, right just the same as that brand new one I got sitting on the bench. So I'm just going to leave this one in here. It's probably not even a year old. But... um. So I've got the gasket in. Uh, probably want to do this on its side because this thing will just fall out. So I'll lay the tank on its side and you can see how easy that goes in and out. And then you can set this up in there. Uh, they made this nice. It only goes on one way because of the, uh, the bolt spacing. So I'm going to get this back in and get the bolts run down. And uh, after that, should be re ready to put it back in the truck. So I'll be back shortly. Have you ever wondered how to ohm out your uh, fuel level sending unit? Just get your uh, get your meter, set it to uh, resistance, just hook up your two wires, and upside down represents full. So 20 ohms on full, and then when you flip it over, it goes to the empty mark, and then 268. And that's right on cue for uh, what the specs call for in the uh, H1 service manual. So 268 empty, flip it back over. 20 on full that is a perfect working sending unit but we're going to leave that alone and we're going to put it back together all right this thing is all ready to go back into the truck so we're about ready to see if we can stuff this back up in there so i got these uh i got these spacers redone and uh, now they're glued on and you can actually hang the tank by these and they're not going to come off the rubber pads that were up in here i mean they were horrible they were put together with, like some contact cement or something and it's it just peels right off. I mean, there's nothing, uh, nothing that holds this. Uh, this this is almost like a neoprene or something, and nothing really, nothing really bonds to that. This is the plug that came out of the bottom of the tank. After 23 years, the screws backed out, but there's no way that is going to collapse. I mean, it is, it is molded out like that. It's mushroomed out. There is no way that's coming out of the tank. So I ended up having to punch this up in through the tank and uh i just fished it out later when i got the tank down so yeah these things if they're old they're not going to come out i got the clips that came out of the fuel line uh they broke but thanks to uh, lord bezos and uh creating amazon i was able to get some new ones delivered on a sunday so um what's nice about these is you can put them back up inside the fitting before you install the fitting so you don't have to try to fish them up in there afterwards when you can't see so I'll snap them back into the fitting and there's like a little, there's a little uh, chamfer on, on the leading edge, which uh, this thing will spread and go right over the flare and then snap back and then you're good to go. So that's about it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of extra rubber stacked up uh, on top of these. I put the new uh, urethane uh, motor mounts in a while back and um, these new polyurethane motor mounts will add half an inch to your body lift so if you add a half inch to the body lift you got to add a half inch to lowering the tank back down to get in the in the correct position and sometimes you have to do that a couple of times but um uh you got to get it shimmed up just right so that drive shaft doesn't come in contact with the steel plate or the gas tank itself so i'm going to set up and then we're going to see if we can put this back in the nose goes up first you get that wedged up behind the uh, transfer case and then we'll see if I can make the connections while it's still down at an angle, if there's enough room now. And then uh, we'll see if we can get it stuffed back up in there. All right. I don't know how much of this you can see, but I got the front of the tank just kind of wedged up on the cross member there. In the back, I ran a level and some boards across my back tires to keep it from sliding out. So it's actually keeping the tank from sliding backwards and dropping back down to the ground. But by doing this, I was able to uh, get up in here and actually make all the connections. 
So the fuel lines are connected. The uh, the vent right here is connected. The got the connectors back on for the um, for the level sensor, and that's it. And then the fuel line ones they just snapped on by uh, putting those clips back in there first. Now for some reason when I took the old tank out. I didn't have room to get up in and do this. I mean, maybe I didn't even really try, but this makes it a whole lot easier to put it back together. Oh, and by the way, these little nuts right here are torqued to uh, 72 inch pounds if you're putting this back together. Now it had a couple P clamps on here holding this stuff down, but this is going up in the top of the truck here and I'm just gonna let it lay up in here. I mean, there's plenty of room and I don't think I really need to strap that stuff down. And I already test fitted this tank. I can't believe how easily this thing slid up into place. So I'm going to set the camera down here. Right now, I don't know if you'll be able to see much of this, but uh, going to angle it up here a little bit. So now with everything connected, I should be able to just push this back up in here. And it just goes right up into place. And then I went ahead and just put my support back underneath. So now it's holding the tank up. Now I can work on getting all the hangers up in there and uh, making sure everything's tightened up. So that was really easy. Uh, maybe part of the reason it went so easy is because I didn't put that forward, uh, uh, that uh, steel plate back up in there, that um, deflector or whatever that thing was for. I had a hard time getting that tank out between here and the transfer case. I mean, it just made it really tight. And in the back, um, that new fitting, it didn't crash on the, uh, it didn't crash on my, um, my transmission cooler housing at all. It just went right up through. So I'm going to go ahead and get the hangers put back on and get this, uh, get this uh, support out of here. And then uh, we'll look at it again before we do the final tightening. All right, so that went in pretty nice. Uh, got the clamp snugged up. Feels pretty solid up in there. Got the back one there. So now the next thing to do is before you go too much further, you want to put that uh, steel plate back in there for that drive shaft protector or the tank protector. And then you want to test fit your drive shaft. You want to make sure you've got this tank shimmed up and down correctly. So if you have to drop it back down and either add a rubber shim or remove a rubber shim, now would be the time to um, uh, test fit that drive shaft and make sure everything's going to clear, nothing's going to hit. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and just button up the rest of it. So uh, let me get that drive shaft test fit and um, it shouldn't take too long. And then we'll try to get this video finished up. Okay, I think we have this thing about wrapped up. So the fuel tank is in and tight. Both the front and rear hangers are tight and they're adjusted right where I want them. I've got the new rubber liners put on all of them. They're cut to size and the drive shaft is in and tight. And this is probably the most critical area right here when you're putting all this back together. You need to have a consistent gap all the way around the back of this drive shaft and uh, to make sure it's not going to rub. If the bottom of your drive shaft is really close to hitting this corner, this metal uh, fuel tank protector right here, or maybe on the top side, it's going to rub on that corner. Then uh, if something's really close there, that means your fuel tank is not shimmed properly. And you need to, go, need to go back and either add or subtract some shims up on those uh, upper sides under the frame. So same way up here, uh, you've got plenty of clearance right here and around the back side. So looking pretty good, not gonna rub. Now they, this plate is a little bit adjustable. They have big giant sloppy holes in here. So you can actually move the plate around a little bit before you get too crazy and start taking stuff apart. So try that first. There's one bolt here, one bolt here, and there's one up here on the, uh, on the top side, which uh, you probably can't see, it's right there. So three bolts, you can kind of move this thing around a little bit. I mean, the holes they put through it are giant. So everything's in it tight. Now would be a good time to uh, shoot a little grease up into your uh, grease fittings there on your drive shaft while you can still spin the, spin the wheel. And uh, that about wraps it up. So I know I didn't put the, uh, I didn't put the uh, rock chip guard back on the bottom of the tank. I don't like it. I don't think it fits worth the dam. And uh, I didn't want it on there. I didn't do this one up here on the front either. So without having this one up here, this tank went in super easy. I mean, it went in really nice. So a lot easier than the old one came out. So the only thing I have left, let's slide out here. 
The only thing left is to put in these parts right here, just your uh, your filler filler neck and uh, your couplings and your little bit of couple screws there. I don't think I need to do a video for that. It's pretty straightforward. I've got a new tube here. I ran new nylon tubing for the breather vent. I've got to cut that off to length and uh, and it goes on to that fitting on the top of the neck there. But I think that about wraps it up. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, I don't think um, I'm going to have any problems with this going forward. About time to put some gas in it and um, see where it goes. And that's about it for this video. And hope you guys got some useful information out of this. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.